Um, my name is Reza. I'm going to be presenting the nomadic life in EVE Online. Uh, and uh, I have 20 minutes of time and 15 slides, so we just start going. Are you guys all okay? Did you get some rest after last night? Because a lot of you were pretty tired. Everybody's good? All right. Need more alcohol, okay. I don't think um, there's a lack of alcohol here. <laughs> all right. Is this thing going to go to the next one? No? Yes? No? What do I have to do? Push it? <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Abort? Okay. All right. So, nomads. What does it mean to be a nomad? Nomads is basically how to successfully suitcase carry around the galaxy. Yeah, it didn't work. How to successfully move around the galaxy while staying is positive and avoiding becoming a sovereignty holding alliance or basically a care bear. Um, <laughs> like, nomads have this huge paradox because, uh, like, you have no purpose in holding space or holding assets. Like, your only purpose is to have fun. And uh, a lot of the guys that we recruit have this problem that uh, um, they found this to be very hard to accept, like, because they are always locked into some space, like, oh, we're goons, we need to hold deck lane, VFK for life, you know? And when you lose that, you kind of lose your purpose. While being a nomad, well, your only purpose is to have fun. So, a short introduction. Who am I? I'm uh, Reza Najafi. I'm CEO of a corp called Sniglov IFC, and I tend to back up FC even more. So, <laughs> our fleets are pretty messy sometimes. Um, Sniglov, it's, uh, it's a corp that has, uh, I believe we have, we're 11 years old now, Loki? Yeah, 11 years? So, we've been here for quite some time, and uh, all we do is win while failing multiple times. Sometimes at the same time, <laughs> but still we're having fun. And we're part of PanFam. PanFam is uh, um, a, a family from uh, Pandemic Legion, Pan uh, Pandemic Horde, uh, Waffles, and I don't know, some people consider NCD to be PanFam as well, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, and just to go th quickly through PanFam, like uh, Hope, uh, a newbie friendly alliance, um, they have a great mentor program, they have very good FCs uh, and uh, very active. So all the new guys go into their recruitment channel in-game, join Space Horde and uh, you, can have, uh, you can have some fun them and learning how to play the game. While in Waffles we are more nomadic, but we're going to talk a little bit about that later. Uh, our in-game channel is John Sneakwaff and if you want to join PL, you need a vouch. And if you don't have a vouch, you join Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe, maybe some people who got rejected by Isfad then just now, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> anyway, the nomadic life. These are the four basic uh, areas I'm going to be talking about. First one is, uh, obviously, you move around, you go where the fun is. That's the whole point. Um, then is the culture check. Strong bonds within the nomadic uh, group of people. Uh, why is that? Like, because uh, nomads, they, ho they don't have really any infrastructure to to base uh, their operations from, like no jump bridges, no um, other type of network that can support you moving around. So what you have is uh, all the guys around you. So you're pretty dependent on the group that you're part of. And yeah, I made one slide of finances and PV because nobody wants to talk about that, but we all somehow have to make money in if right? And the corp as well. And the last part, which is probably the most important part, is uh, content. What is content, how to find it, and uh, where to go, where to deploy. All right, this thing is not working, this is good. Uh, moving around the universe, go where the fun is. Like I said, find the target. This is something I'm going to be covering uh, a little bit into details in the last part of the presentation. Um, nomads have a lot of freedom. You don't have any kind of assets that you must hold. Like, you're not holding space. Sometimes you hold some Mungu uh, towers or uh, pokers and so on, but all of that, it's, uh, it, you can lose it without too much, uh, too much issues, unless your name is Cypek and you're taking care of Corp Wallet. Um, <laughs> deployments can be scary. Uh, you deploy sometimes to the same system as uh, your enemy or just a few jumps away, uh, and a lot of people can get scared about that, um, but at the same time, that brings content to your doorstep, so it's like PvP 24-7. Another uh, thing that it's uh, very specific for nomads is like that you have 10 blues. You don't have really, um, really stable relationship with uh, both friends and foes, and that means that sometimes a lot of people have a hard time understanding that, like how can you sometimes work with Snuffbox, and then the next day you work with Shadow Cartel. Well, we can, we can do this. 
Um, a good thing about being a nomad is like you're always, almost always on the defense and never on the defense, uh, which uh, makes your mortality a little bit more like Americanized, like you will always start to win <laughs> you want to win. <laughs> and uh, you're pushed every time into a niche environment, environment, so new enemies, new doctrines, uh, new systems, so basically it's a tough life. All right, so yeah, the plan can be a pain in the ass. There are basically two different type of move ops, subcaps and uh, capital move up. Subcaps <coughs> is like if you have ships seated at your desktop, and capital it's like a suitcase, uh, carriers, and now dress as well, plus super titans. Uh, CCP is making our life really a pain with jump fatigue and jump range. Um, the range is getting extended a little bit soon, so that's going to be okay. But uh, for example, we deployed to MNC a few months ago. It was, I believe, 16 or 15 sinus away. It took us three, four days. Still better than the goons moving down to there, which took them, I don't know, weeks. <laughs> All right. Um, roads, when you're moving around when you're, when you're, when you're capital, like there are choke points uh, in even line. And uh, you get on all these low sec uh, people that will hunt your carriers and super carriers. Uh, one of them, it's, uh, it's called Wrecking Crew. And uh, Wrecking Crew led by Rocket X are dangerous too because sometimes mistakes made and uh, they kill Blues as well. All right, so like I said, move offs, they take a lot of time. Like uh, what we do is we usually do three, four hours per day for multiple type of days, so you have to make them fun. Uh, we tend to watch movies, have karaoke nights and do some other things that I'm not allowed to say on stream because it's going to be censored. Um, and yeah, you, you get to learn a lot about roads and choke points and game mechanics, like jumping from your cloaky session timer and uh, how to um, take hits with your caps without getting tackled. One other thing about uh, when you're moving around, like you need a lot of outs. Uh, sign outs, uh, market outs, JIT outs, uh, Falcon outs, everybody has a Falcon out, right? Um, you cannot basically play this game with just one carrier, well, one character, or one account. So, yeah, I don't know. We have some people who have like, just one account, but they're all, they're all spies anyway. Um, logistic, having a good logistic jump trader service can make your life a lot easier. Uh, you can either stock uh, your desktop with ships or just uh, bring them afterwards. And in New Office, we have something that we call WSSM, and it's a great service. Uh, another thing that you must have is uh, a recon group. Uh, they need to scout the area that you're deploying, but I'm going to be covering that a little bit into details later. And if CCP is making our life hard by jump range and jump fatigue, on the other side they introduce citadels, uh, which are a safe haven uh, for your jump clones or an NPC, no sec or low sec, are not the only viable options to, to deploy anymore. So you can just leap out of a citadel or safely move your caps through it. I've said that something about culture check, and I found this uh, quote because I wanted this presentation to look more professional. I went to Google, I typed in a culture check uh, quote, and this is the first thing that I got. But sometimes you have to realize that some people can stay in your heart, but not in your life. Um, quote by Google, because there was no author. Uh, and yeah, not everybody can be a nomad, because being a nomad is not easy. Uh, like I said, the only real asset that you have are your corp mates, and it's very hard because you're really dependent on them. Um, and that's why we, in our core, promote usefulness a lot. Uh, and uh, basically, the whole structure is uh, made on meritocracy. I can't pronounce it, but whatever. Uh, we're very relaxed. However, normal group is as strong as the weakest link is. So we haze you because we love you, or because we want you to leave the corp if you're too bad. <laughs> Okay, about the culture, like you, um, we have a get good attitude, like you're forced to improve every day. Uh, we pretty much accept everybody in the corp, we give them a chance, we give them a chance to improve. Um, but after a few, let's say months or something, if you're still making some really, really big mistakes, you get purged. Um, recruiting is not easy, Our recruiting director is sitting here in the second row, and since I know him, he has some pretty many gray hair. Um, because uh, it's hard to find people that, will, that can fit in this type of game style. Um, but it can be very rewarding, like a road. Being a nomad is hard, but the bonds you create within the group, it's like, uh, it's like family. Uh, and we're going to talk about this a bit more later in the next slide. Um, and CIS, uh, CCP Rice has given this great presentation about uh, Alpha Clones. Uh, we are creating an alliance called Pancakes. Uh, pancakes dot, sorry. Uh, this is gonna be the first nomad um, alpha clone alliance ever, and we're gonna try to 
uh, give all these guys who are gonna try for free a chance to play uh, with, with us and have fun and just PvP without uh, any other hassle. All right, yeah. The, the Nomad Paradox, I found this pretty amazing. Um, a lot of our guys that are in our corp for years are saying this, like after years of searching, I, fi I have finally found uh, my home and family, a of members. Basically, what it is, why is it the paradox? Is because you have no space, you have no assets um, to call home uh, or sovereignty to hold, but you find your fun and family uh, where the fun is. Okay, finance SMPV. I made only one slide for this because I found this terribly boring. Money, money, money must be funny, but well, guess what? It's not. Making money even online, it's uh, <laughs> not the most enjoyable thing to do. Uh, so, as every corp, our corp needs finances to survive for SRP, for move ops, for the infrastructures like uh, citadels, uh, uh, towers, and, and so on. Um, our income is mostly from mercenary contracts or Mungu, POCOS, and industry. There is one industry model called the Tucker Array that uh, in LOSIC it gives you quite a little bit of edge uh, in the uh, minerals needed for making capital so you can do, make them for a higher profit margin and this is how we basically finance a whole corp. And uh, at the same time for our members, like you are, you're not living in a space that uh, can provide you PVE content or can provide you money, so this is where you have all those outs like factional warfare outs, level 5 mission outs, wormhole outs, incursion outs. And yeah, some people actually make money PvPing, like CCP Rice told before. But to make money, you need not to die when you loot, uh, <laughs> when you loot your bad guy uh, ship. Okay, content. How to maximize fun per hour? Because you only live once. This is the whole point. You need to figure out what fun is and what is not fun. You need to know very well your members because um, a lot of people have different needs, a lot of people play this game in different play styles. Uh, there you need to know their abilities. Um, and uh, the most important is, like, the thing is our fleet commanders and content creators. And you need to pay real attention to them because they are, they are um, how to call them? Some, some are really like, dramatic guys, some are really relaxed guys, but they are the ones who provide you content. So um, you need to get, take good care of it. Uh, and when you're planning a deployment, um, uh, the viability of uh, uh, campaign commanders and FCs is uh, really important because if you deploy somewhere and you have no, nobody that can take fleets out, then that's not going to end well. And yeah, different type of content require different type of people, obviously. So there's uh, different type of content, like I said. Like you have these daily fights, from solo roams or third party and whatnot. These things happen unanswerly. And we have a very strong roaming, uh, roaming uh, culture. Um, then the next type of content, are like rapid deployments, you just grab a travel scepter, you burn those 20 jumps in 20 minutes, and then you find a ship there already stocked in the market, you buy it, and uh, you have PvP. And then on the other hand, you have full deployments. When you deploy with everything you got, like all uh, capitals, all subcapitals, you need to do a very uh, planned study of your enemy, and you need to bring the doctrines that are going to counter them. So you're, you're not giving what you think is best, or what, you, what your best doctrine is, but you bring what uh, counters them in all situations. Uh, and yeah, and the, the other, the last type of content is our mercenary work. Like you do what you have to do for that ISK, right? even if it's boring, like shooting bosses. How to find content? This is the question that we are getting asked most of the time, and uh, it's probably the hardest one. Uh, once you figure out what type of content you want, uh, the best place to start to look for it is Skype or Discord, or all your connections that you make in the past. A lot of people just... Uh, once you start doing, uh, having uh, PPPing and having fun, there's some guys screaming outside, what's happening? <laughs> uh, they, they just come with you and tell you, hey, look, we have uh, this fight happening, or would you like to deploy to this area? This uh, could be a rich uh, type of environment for you. And uh, then you just go and have uh, some fun then. Uh, if you don't have any, any like, connections from past that can give you some intel, then you do your own research. You basically Google it. You check Reddit every day, uh, Dotlan, uh, news sites, and see which areas are hitting up and which are aren't. And yeah, like I said, your recon team must really do a very good work. They need to do a whole new research. Uh, like whatever type of intel you get on an enemy, it 
you cannot trust it as much as you can trust your recon guys. So your recon team must do a good job scout in the area and uh, figure out what type of doctrines uh, the bad guys are flying and which ones you should use. Um, like I said, the more you know about this area and the groups living there, the less surprises you're going to run into at the end. Okay, once you have a target, you're almost Gucci, but there are still a few things that you have to do. Um, I mentioned this already, like you have to pick carefully the doctrines you're going to bring with you. You're limited if you're taking one suitcase carrier, but uh, by that one million uh, cubic meter space. So if you see that, for example, your battleship doctrine that you're taking with you, it's not working well, it can be a huge pain in the ass to bring another doctrine, uh, battleship size to, let's say, 15 uh, sinus away. So you need to do very, very good work scouting the area and picking this up. And this is usually done by our FCs in advance. Uh, and sometimes we choose correctly, sometimes we just have to do many, many jump friendly runs. Uh, Intel, 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 like I said, the more you know about your enemy, the better it is. And uh, when you are in an area that you've never been before, you need to establish a working relationship with all the locals. Uh, sneak off, we're really, we're known and respected in, uh, in low second in Olive, and most of the groups don't have problems working with us. Uh, so uh, that's... Uh, that's okay, all right. So, content, last slide. Like sometimes max fun per hour is not enough. What we really like to do is farming tiers. We have many, many threads on the forum with some really hateful emails, uh, emails and, and stuff. Um, but this is probably more rewarding than kill mail sometimes. <laughs> and then of course you have to hit some key structures to provoke fights, like a lot of people think that uh, denying fights to to know my sort of like two people moving to their area is gonna make them uh, make them move away, but that's not true because we're just gonna hit everything you have and uh, you're gonna have to undock and fight us. Uh, and yeah, you can like what we do if we don't have a, a very focused area that we wanna deploy. What we do is uh, we usually pick a system or we go back to Kenako, which is our home space, and just test new doctrines, new FCs, new tactics, and whatnot. So your gameplay and enemies always change. You need to be adopting fast, and uh, this is uh, one other key thing of being a nomad. All right, this is the last slide. So in-game channel joins Snigwaf. All we do is win, not really. And uh, I believe we have like what three minutes for some Q and A. So maybe I'm gonna take a few questions. Don't be scared. What we want to do with pancakes is uh, we want those guys who are going to join, who be joining Alpha Waffles to just focus on the PvP. We're going to give them ships, we're going to give them the place to be, we're going to tell them how to do it. So we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to um, have them focusing on how to make money, how to do that stuff. We just want them to see it, to enjoy the PvP. This is uh, the focus for pancakes, yeah. Does uh, Snigwafa have any age restrictions, anything like that? Uh, real life restrictions, like if uh, you're under a certain age, et cetera, et cetera? No. We, no, we pretty much take everybody. We, I think we had some guys who were like 13 years old, right? They were grown by Snigwaf. They're like 20 now. <laughs> I don't know what kind of product we made now in the end, but... <laughs> What would you say makes Waffles different from the other low-sec corporations around them, like Snowfall, Shadow Cartel, places like that? Well, why, would I, why would I join them? Join you over them? Because we have more fun. <laughs> and because, um, like, all, in Waffles, we really promote usefulness. We really want everybody to be useful, everybody to their part. Except you, yeah. <laughs> we want everybody, everybody has to do their own part. Like we don't have, uh, we have divisive groups, but they then join other alliances or corps. But uh, we really promote that and uh, um, it can be very hard, but very rewarding at the same time. And a lot of people like this and uh, the corp is very active and uh, um, this is it pretty much. How would you join 
you click apply in game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not up yet. It's not that. Up. It's going to be up soon in the till the things come. Do you have a personal favorite type of op to run? Sorry, I didn't hear this. Do you personally have a favorite type of op to run? A paid what? Do you have a favorite type of op to run? Personally? Our favorite type of op. <laughs> the one that gets me the most kills. <laughs> or when we kill uh, CO2 titans, for example, or stuff like that. <laughs> but all, all ops are fun. Everything's fun. From roms, from everything. Right. We have time for one last question. Who? We are right now in the place in Austin Joe. But we are playing a deployment in two weeks, and it should be pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, thanks for thanks for this. Like, if uh, if you're watching the stream, you're doing something wrong because you're not here. Vegas is pretty fun. Um, your sleeping schedule gets F, but uh, you get to meet a lot of new guys. So, thanks for coming.